one. Hello, you guys, and welcome to the Women's Cave. And guess who got to say that today, the narcissist of the group? I feel I feel like there's a light inside of me that has been waiting to spark and, and glow. Really? Yes. Well, I let her do it because she has cotton candy between her teeth. And <laughs> so, you know, Jade still wins. Let's be honest. Hey, Winona, doesn't Jade win? Okay, so here's the thing. You know, you guys remember, but we are having champagne wars. We had a, a, a peace and a, a peace treaty of, on absolutely. the champagne wars. And we wars. just absolutely ordered, like, a whole new box, which is So I feel exciting that for letting her talk while I have, letting me have cotton candy in between my teeth, I, that deserves a whole bottle of champagne to myself. Well, let me, why are you always angling for a whole bottle? We just ordered the box today. It's not going to be here till next week. You can't have a whole bottle to yourself, Winona. You have to share. Sharing is caring, darn it. That's why we wrote these books, because we wanted to share our yes. meager wisdom. Our <laughs> meager wisdom, because the literary life guys with pop poetry. All right. And I thought the voice was bad with other life lessons. That is available on audible.com. And, and, oh, my goodness. I'm just like, I'm tired of saying and I thought being grown up was easy. That's, uh, that's going to be an audio book. Great job, Joe. It's Joe, two years, but it's Joe, amazing. Joe, rock it. All right. And then, oh, my goodness, just all the books, all the books, okay, are just, you can just look it up on andwethought.com. I'm, I'm tired of listing all the books. I'm tired. I'm tired. Oh, no. We have the poetry book that you cannot get on Amazon. It's barnesandnoble.com, which is If Only I Were Me. Yeah. And we are the founders of the 25 Hottest Authors. Artists. Indeed. And 25 Hottest Indie Authors, Artists, and Advocates magazine. He's not an indie author, and I want to ask him to be in the magazine. <laughs> you didn't read his website, did you? Shame on you. It was right there on it, Indie Bound. Moving yeah. on. Shame on you. You're not here to hear about us. You're here to hear about our oh, wait, wait, I forgot to say, our website is www.andrethought.com. Oh, and I'm Wilnona. And no, I already we oh, did we it. did that? Yes. Okay, cool. All right, you're not here to hear about us. You're here to hear about our wonderful guest. Wonderful guest, would you like to introduce yourself? He's having a lovely laugh at our expense, and I love it. I love it. Do that thing. Well, hi, my name is Alex George. Uh, I am an author. Uh, I'm also the owner of a bookstore in Columbia, Missouri. Uh, I'm also the founder and director of the Unbound Book Festival that takes place in, in Missouri. Uh, and I'm also, in all of my spare time, an attorney. And uh, my, and most, I, my most recent book that I just published a couple of weeks ago is called The Paris Hours. It looks back to front to me. I don't know. But, um, uh, and uh, that was published by Macmillan and it's just out. And um, yeah, I'm sort of not, the, the uh, hasn't been quite the launch that I thought because I was supposed to be on a, on a sort of two week nationwide tour right now. And here I am in my shop, but uh, that's okay because I get to talk to, to you instead. So it's all good. So oh, that was nice. That, I like how you said that. That was nice. Yeah, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. no, no. We don't believe no. you, but that's okay. <laughs> Nothing like being on the road. <laughs> because, I mean, we've been on the road 26 weeks out of a year for two and a half years. Yes. So we know it's so much more fun to be on the road than sitting here and yes. doing this. Because then you uh, have to your own breakfast. Oh like, God. all you do is pick up the phone and go. Hello. Oh, yeah, literally, and that's how it that in the morning. That's the, that her first phone call, and that's how it sounds. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> hang it back. Okay. So, <laughs> let's get back to you and focus yes. on you. So, so, you are amazing. Absolutely. Let's talk about your new book. Oh, you weren't professional. I did go professional because I'm trying. <laughs> okay, yeah, so, what do you want to know? So, the, the Paris Hours, here it is again. Uh, it's... Uh, Paris. It's set in, um, in Paris, oddly enough, in 1927, uh, and it's set over the course of one day in the summer of 1927, and it's really, it's a novel, but it tells us four different stories uh, of four different characters, and they're told in alternating chapters. And there is a, there's a painter, who I think is probably not a very good painter, uh, who is um, on the run from some thugs that he's borrowed money from. There's a journalist who, um, uh, tells other people's stories because he has his own story that sort of he can't bring himself to tell. Uh, and then there is a, a, a puppeteer who is um, a refugee from the Armenian genocide uh, who performs puppet shows in the Paris squares for the children of Paris, but he performs them in his own language in Armenian rather than in French. And then finally there is the maid of the writer Marcel Proust. And the story really began with her 
uh, and I was reading uh, a memoir of, um, the, of Proust's actual maid, who was called Celeste Albaret. And uh, she, was, she told the story about how one day Proust asked her to burn all of his notebooks. And um, one of the things that novelists do is to sort of ask what if, and sort of, and so when I read this, I sort of thought, well, what if she hadn't burned them all? And what if she had just kept one for herself? And then the next question was, well, and what if there was something in that notebook that nobody knew about and what, the, what would the consequences be? And so really from that, that was really where the seed of the whole, the whole book came from, was from that, that one idea. I like this premise. So I saw the Paris Hours cover, and I'm going to be honest here. And Don't be I'm honest. Sorry. Don't be honest. Don't oh, be honest. She might a little be bit honest. 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 Lord. Okay, he said a little bit. So I'm going to be. A, I'm going to just be whole honest. I saw the cover and I went, oh, it's a literary book. But I like that. I like everything that he does, and he seems awesome. I'm going to ask anyway. But now I'm like, don't judge a book by its cover. That is like rule number one. Like <laughs> that is rule number one. Well, no, no. You so, um, you got my audible credit. If this is an audio book, oh. just wanted you to know. My head. I, my I don't. Head. I, I'm sorry. But anyway, you've won. Definitely won me over. So you, everyone listening to this, you definitely got to read this because I'm probably going to do a book club thing on this later, and I'm going to ask you all if you read it. Um, moving on. <laughs> if you have and she to- will ask you too, like straight up, and be like, "Well, what did it say on page 45?" Exactly. <laughs> it's like, this is a test. Oh, dear. Okay. <laughs> so I do, like, she did professional, and we talked about your book. So I want to do one question that's not as professional. You have an accent. And then I saw that you studied in Oxford. So yeah. did you go to Oxford from the U.S., or were you just originally in the U.K.? No, originally? I'm English. I'm English. So I was, I was born in the U.K., and I lived there until I was 33, um and then i came yeah i came to the states in 2003 so 17 years ago now it seems like a very long time um yeah so um i'm originally english i am now a u.s citizen um but that's and and i think my accent is actually getting stronger <laughs> the, the more time i spend here with my my children just sound like regular american kids but um i yeah I'm still sort of staying sort of very Downton Abbey, you know, upstairs, of course, not downstairs, but um, yeah. So, okay, two questions, and then that's where I'll get back to professionalism. Because um, she didn't say the distraction I, part. She was I, like, if you get distracted, I, I, if we get distracted, normally she says at the beginning, we just go down the rabbit hole. I have you a, a question. question. Okay, we'll swap off. Real question. Real question. So <laughs> what, are, what are some of your top three tips that you would give aspiring authors today? The top three tips? Um, so the, so the first thing I would say is, um, find a place and a time where you can write every day. Uh, one of my favorite quotes is by Somerset Maugham, who said, I only ever write when inspiration strikes, uh, but happily it strikes every morning at nine o'clock when I sit down at my desk. And it's, it's all about, I mean, everyone's different. I guess I should start by saying, you know, what works for me doesn't necessarily work for anybody else, but it's all about, for me, is all about routine. Um, you know, I have four jobs and writing is just one of them. And I get up at five o'clock every day and I write between five and seven every morning. And I don't know when I begin if I'm going to write 20 words or 200 words or 2,000 words. And in a funny sort of way, it doesn't matter. The, the important thing is that you show up. Because the one thing you can be sure of is if you don't sit down and turn the computer on, you're not going to write anything. So, you know, uh, obviously you'd rather do 2020, but um, it's like you every day, if you do it every day and you do it on a regular basis, before you know it, you're going to turn around and you're going to have something to work with and something to edit. So that would be, that's always been my, my biggest, most best, best bit of advice. The other thing I would say is um, uh, read, obviously read as much as you can and as widely as you can and read every genre, every author you can think of um that that is all gonna help and you are you asked for three right jade yeah okay uh so the third thing i will say is jigsaw puzzles um they are really if you ever have writer's block uh do a jigsaw puzzle uh, I, I i have one going pretty much all the time in the desk next to my writing desk 
and, and if I ever feel like I'm getting tired or the, the ideas have stopped, I will go over and, and do a bit of the jigsaw because it engages an entirely different bit of your brain. It's entirely visual, no words in, involved. And if you do that for 10 or 15 minutes, um, it's like just having a, 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 a nap. Uh, and I come back to my screen feeling completely invigorated. My brain is sort of, that part of my brain has sort of had a chance to rest a little bit and is feeling refreshed. So there are, my, there are my three. That is fabulous. Oh. I'm gonna go right out to my garage and pull out. Jigsaw puzzles. Do we do have some? Yeah, I'm gonna go to my and then we're gonna put it in the guest house and then we're gonna do it. Yeah, we're gonna do them in the guest house. Absolutely. Because mm -hmm. I mean, if you're having trouble in the house, then you you need to go to the guest house where there's a refrigerator of liquor and pinball machines. And <laughs> 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 well, and yes, I, I'm always impressed by people who can. Uh, who can write anywhere. I mean, I have friends who like write on trains and they write in cafes and coffee shops. I just can't, I mean, if I try and write in the coffee shop, I'm forever just sort of going, well, I'm just, I'm far, <laughs> I'm far too nosy and paying too much attention about what everybody else is doing. Uh, and so I, when I write, I have a, my desk is completely, there is nothing on it. Uh, there is just a wall in front of me with nothing on it. There is no wind. I just, I'm like, I like a goldfish. If there's the slightest thing that catches my attention, I'm like this. And so, so I need to remain very, very focused. And I have, oh, oh, so can I give you a fourth piece of advice? Absolutely. We love it. Turn off the internet. There is a thing called freedom that you can use if you have, I don't know if it's for PCs, but on a Mac uh, and you can say no internet for two hours. And once you've done it, you can't get back on unless you actually turn the computer off and turn it back on again. And I think it speaks more to how little self will I have, but it works for me. Uh, and uh, it's really useful. So there's, there's a bonus, a bonus piece of advice for you. I love that. That's a piece of advice. I think everyone, everyone I mean, you know, I'm the millennial, I know it. I don't understand. <laughs> what was going to happen if someone's coming on, on Instagram? I need to like it. <laughs> Oh, okay. But no, that, that actually sounds really awesome. And so I that. quickly, because we are running out of time. Um, um, and he's busy. And you are very busy because you are on a nationwide tour from your store. Yeah. Uh, that's and a, you yeah. found time to fit us in. Let's go with that. Yeah, I just I did a thing in New York just now, and then this evening I'm doing one in California. So that's kind of nationwide. I guess it's pretty. pretty yes. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It works. It absolutely works. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the festival? You are the director of the festival. Can you tell us what, where to find out information about it, how people can submit to be in it, and that sort of thing? Yeah, so so it's called the Unbound Book Festival. Uh, unboundbookfestival.com, I guess, uh, is the website. And we would have been having our fifth year this year, but we canceled uh, because of this, because of COVID. Um, and we've had some incredible writers. We've had, um, excuse me, Salman Rushdie and Michael Andache and Zadie Smith and uh, George Saunders has come. Uh, and this year we were supposed to be having Tracy Smith, the poet laureate. Uh, and she's actually gonna come next year. She's agreed to just postpone it for a year. Um, it's an event we, we have about nine and a half to 10,000 people who come. It's completely free. So you all should come, just come to Missouri for <laughs> next April. Absolutely. It's, um, it's, I don't think people understand when people invite us places, we actually show yeah. up. Yeah, so they, they invited us to the, the South Dakota Book Festival, and we were, like, there. And we, we it went. Was, it yeah. was fun. Well, mostly I went I went because it was going to be fun, and then they have a red carpet. And, well, Nona cannot resist the red carpet. I don't care. So <laughs> if you said there's a red carpet, I'm coming. I mean, I'm coming anyway because barbecue. I actually, yeah, that's true. We have barbecue. But if you have any sort of carpet where they're taking pictures, I'll be there. Just let me know. Well, we should probably get one then. I mean, that's clear. <laughs> Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. <laughs> also, uh, last question. Where can people find out more about you and your books and um, your bookshop? Also. Yes. So, uh, yes, many, many websites when you have all these different jobs. So my author website is uh, alexgeorgebooks.com. Um, and then the 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 website for the bookshop which is where i am now as you can probably see uh, is skylockbookshop.com and uh yeah the, the author website there's stuff about my other books and all that sort of stuff so it's, it's all there all right 
anyway, thank you Alex, so you have much. been amazing. And thank you for like carving out like a time to be on our silly show. Of course, much. of course, it's been a joy. Thank you so much. I heard you on the Gaithersburg Book Festival, and I went. I don't think he's gonna match. But we're gonna have fun. But we're gonna make it work. And we're gonna have fun. Fun. No, no, no. Okay, I feel like I've said too many mean things in one day. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> We were almost made it. We, we were wrapping up professional. Now let's do it, Winona. Jade, would you like to wrap us up? Absolutely. You can find everything your ladies are doing on www.andwethought.com. While you're there, take a moment, go to the ladies tab, go down to the middle of the page, and see the charities that we probably support. Yes, we know that times are hard, and money is not something that everyone has right now, and that's understandable, but maybe you can give them time. Or if you're doing a big clean-out, you might want to donate some clothes, books, I know, other things. Knowledge also. Knowledge is always important. So thank you in advance. And just remember that wisdom is all around you if you're open to finding it and accepting it. So peace and love, you guys, from Winona. Oh, wow. You did it professionally. And Jade.